Hello folks and welcome back to Dubious Engineering. This is a Sterling kit from sterlingkit.com. Um, yeah, it takes a little bit of fettling to get everything working and sorted. Uh, there's a few little problems, but ultimately, as you can see, it sort of does what it says on the tin. Uh, I want to have a bit of a moan at these guys because clearly they didn't check quality before sending this to me. There's a bit of plating missing and uh, there's holes out of position and that kind of stuff, which sort of is annoying, but also quite rewarding when you finally get everything up and running. Uh, not only that, um, some of the glass cylinders uh, needed a little bit of attention as well. Anyway, as you can see, I've got us in high speed mode at the moment, and I'm just sort of trying to put the assembly together. This didn't come with any instructions, which is uh, a bit weird. Well, actually, the, there were some basic instructions, but they weren't very good. They uh, didn't really show you how to put it all together. So I went to their website and had a look at some of the pictures and thought, yeah, I can probably build this by the pictures. But yeah, this is the second defect, uh, and this one sort of drove me nuts a little bit. This is quite fundamental. Uh, and ultimately, I had to re-drill this hole to about, um, well, I think I got it to about six mil. And then finally, I could get that screw in place uh, for the bearings for the flywheel assembly. But anyway, so what are we actually doing at the moment? We're putting together the bearings for the flywheel assembly. I think I just mentioned that. It is quite a cute little design. I do like the design. I, ju I just love Sterling engines in many respects. What's interesting about Sterling engines? engines is there's no exhaust valves or ports or inlet valves basically you've got two cylinders one receives a cool air whilst the other one receives hot air they move that warm air around and the differential between the cold air and the warm air effectively create motion or translate into mechanical motion so it is quite cool to get one of these up and running and as you can see there, we've got the two bearing races built into the bracket. We used a little screwdriver just to sort of pry that bracket open so the bearing races were easy to fit in there. And then what we've got to do is select the appropriate wheels. One has a V-slot for a rubber band that drives the electric generator down at the bottom there. And one has a pin on it which accommodates the armatures for the pistons. And using some tiny grub screws, we lock those wheels in place and everything sort of starts to take shape. Uh, so the next deal here is to test whether or not this is free running. And there's a couple of washers to put on there as well. So that the flywheel is stepped away from the internal bearing, uh, which again encourages things to move smoothly and neatly and easily. I must admit I've really toned down my disappointment with this actually in many respects only because i think i actually finally got it working but there was some severe frustrations with the whole build process and there were some schoolboy errors with the manufacturer of this just quality checks really that was all that was needed to make this absolutely spot on Anyway, the great news is, is we finally have something that's starting to take shape. The next thing we've got to do here is to start getting the rubber grommets in place, the rubber washers in place, and we need to start putting these little glass tubes in place. So the glass tubes have other glass tubes that fit inside the glass tubes. They're precision made or they're ground, I would say, to the point where they fit almost perfectly. Uh, and sadly, the uh, glass tubes that I got, uh, that I think were in matched pairs. Sadly, the glass tubes that I got in my kit didn't quite fit perfectly. Uh, and there was a little bit of fettling to do in order to sort those little rats out. But eventually... <laughs> <laughs> we got those glass tubes sorted. There are some little red washers and they're really hard work to try and get in place. In the end, I decided to use a little bit of spittle from my own mouth. Um, so I licked my finger and uh, ran that around the inside of the port and also ran it around the rubber washers. And that made the assembly process a whole load easier. And we were able to get that glass tube in place. I suppose you could say I'm the first person to have performed a wet willy on the Stirling engine. 
anyway, um, rotating the glass tubes I found and uh, uh, plenty of encouragement finally managed to get these little blighters in place. So <laughs> let's let's move. Let's have oh, more spill going on. <laughs> proper wet willy job but yeah you know what honestly it was it was a hardship this whole build was um it wasn't easy but in many respects that's sort of what i appreciated about it i would have loved it if the quality had been a little bit uh a little bit better but you know it is what it is so right let's let's see if we can get some pistons in here only oh, piston broke <laughs> let's see if we can get some pistons plugged into this thing so well done to you guys for making it this far through the build video. Just wanted to let you know that I've got two or three uh, drinky poos on board, Jack Daniels mostly. I wanted to offer up a shout out to a few good friends, uh, Lee Gravenor, Jack, Bill, Mark Glass, Matty, and uh, various others. And obviously too many to mention, so many lovely people that I really enjoy chatting with from time to time. Anyway... Uh, all that done, let's get back to this build process and let's see if we can get these glass tubes and let's see if we can get everything starting to run freely and sweetly. And we're almost there, people. Can you believe this has been two hours of my life building this device? In fact, to be honest, it's been more than two hours. And then on top of that, there's been the video processing and then there's been the voiceover. And I'm hoping you're enjoying the voiceover experience. I'm hoping that the voiceover experience is nice and relaxing. Now, <laughs> here's the next problem I came across is just had these graunching noises coming out of the glass tubes. And it was ultimately just down to the fact that the glass tubes although they do appear to be precision made and ground and perfectly cylindrical they're not so uh, a little bit again a little bit of fettling required in order to make those glass tubes fit a little bit better and then it's time to light the bugger so let's get let's get some alcohol my favorite subject let's get some alcohol in a container with a wick and let's see if we can get this thing going let's take it downstairs put it on the glass countertop and you can hear I hope you can hear me trying to start this. It's been lit for a couple of minutes and it's just not firing up. We've changed out those glass tubes. Oh, it's almost there. Look at it. Oh, I think I've found out what the problem is. Let's see if she'll run. Oh, it's almost there. Come on. You know you want to start. Yeah. <laughs> Off we go. Come on. Oh, happy days. Oh, nearly. Oh, it's so close. Right. Finally, I think I've got it. Oh, come on. <laughs> that is the sound of success. Right there. That is the sound of success. That is the sound of pure happiness. Let's have a look around this bad boy. I, I know you hate it when I say bad boy, but let's have a look around this bad boy. And let's connect up the light bulb to the little electric motor that's effectively operating as a generator. Oh, how cool is that? There we go, finally, we've got a Stirling engine that does what it says on the tin. I tell you what, if you were a novice builder, this would not be a good kit for you. Anyway, as always, thanks ever so much for watching. Take care. Have a wonderful week and weekend. Make sure you give us a good old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We'll catch you in the next video. Cheers and beers, people. Bye for now.